All right, so this is gonna be a quick, short build. I'm gonna try to start doing some of these because uh, I just I want to get some videos out, and it takes too long to do these these big long form ones. Um, so just both production as well as you know editing and everything else. So I'm just gonna slap a bunch of stuff together. This will not be very produced. Um, and we'll see how these things go. Uh, so today's uh, issue is that I currently have a monitor, as you can see over here. Um, unfortunately, while I am welding with my welding helmet here, uh, my monitor actually runs on CCFL tubes uh, for backlight, which is cold cathode fluorescent. Uh, because of that, it emits a little bit of UV light, and due to that, the um, the helmet detects that as being UV light coming off of an arc, and it triggers. So unfortunately, my auto dimming helmet is always dim when my monitor is on. Um, and it's really frustrating to turn my monitor on and off constantly as I'm trying to weld because I want to look something up or change track or do something on my screen. Uh, and so I've decided that I'm going to swap it out for something a little different. It's also very old. Uh, it pulls a ton of power. It's like 135 watts. Off topic. Uh, so anyways, I bought this guy, which is a uh, 4K TV. Really cheap. This open box is junk. You know, I, it doesn't have to be anything special. It's just sitting in the garage. So the problem is that uh, the mount, if you can see this, there's a, a monitor arm behind here. That mount is a 100 by 100 VESA uh, screen or um, uh, bolt pattern. Uh, this TV here uses a 200 by 300 VESA pattern, kind of like a weird vertical um, shape. So what I've got to do really quick is just uh, build a, an adapter plate that adapts between the 100 by 100 that is on the back of my monitor arm and the uh, 200 by 300 that's on the back of the TV. They sell these mounts, however the problem with the mounts that are sold is that these mounts um, traditionally center everything up. So you have the 100 by 100 in the center and then you know evenly out space top and bottom is the 200 by 300 pattern. Uh, while that would work, um, the problem is that my monitor arm is not very tall. So this is currently the tallest it goes right here. So if I was to put that TV on there as it was uh, with one of those adapter plates that you can buy, the uh, TV would actually sit down on the bench because of how high up that sits on the back of the TV. So what I need to do is design a mount that actually sits below it so it, it pushes that, that, that 200 by 300 pattern up in relation to the 100 by 200 pattern um, so that you can kind of keep the TV above the uh, the bench in the same fashion that this one is. So I'm gonna quick whip it up in Fusion because I like to just, you know, draw stuff in Fusion. Kinda helps me visualize things, make sure I'm not gonna make any errors. Uh, and then from there, we'll just find some metal and um, just drill some holes and that should be really straightforward. All right, so for these videos, I'm gonna be doing um, mostly voiceovers just because of a couple facts, uh, I like to listen to music while I'm working and that will give me some YouTube copyright um, takedowns and um, also because it's just noisy in the garage. So I'm just going to find us some good aluminum plate here thick enough to run some threads into. Um, this is uh, about the right size so we're just going to go ahead and get this thing uh, cut down to size. Now. Um, as I was saying, the, the voiceovers that I'm going to be doing right now just with my headset, so they probably won't sound the best. Um, I'll try to get a microphone set up. Um, I've got a nice one, but I have to get it all set up with my recorder, so that'll probably be a little later on. Um, so for now, I'm just going to be doing um, just some simple stuff and kind of explaining what I'm doing. Um, and, you know, I'll pop in audio where I need to. But um, we're just going to go ahead and cut this down. Now this is too big to fit under my bandsaw, so I'm going to go ahead and use my jigsaw with a metal blade in it. Um, just got a little cordless jigsaw, um, and I'm going <laughs> to jankily hold on to this thing. Unfortunately, I didn't get any uh, video of this, so you just get to see me dragging the jigsaw along the side. Got to clean up afterwards, and of course, since I'm running the vacuum, I might as well clean up the rest of the area too. Gotta apologize for how uh, how messy this desk is. I'm in the middle of working on some projects. Oh, look at this workstation. What a complete slob. Okay, so I've done the layout already, and I've laid everything out from one corner to hopefully eliminate any kind of um, issues with how I've um, cut this. Since I've cut on a jigsaw, it's a little bit wavy, so I, I made sure to measure everything from one corner. Um, and I'm gonna just, uh, I went ahead and center punched all the holes with the automatic center punch. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and try to accurately draw all these things. Um, the whole point of kind of laying this out from one corner is so that if you have any cut issues, like if you cut this the whole plate too narrow or too wide, 
um, you won't run into the issue of um, your plate, your your holes being off because if you measure some of the holes from one side, some of the holes from the other side, uh, any errors cutting the plate will show up in the um, in the final output. The holes will be too close together or too far apart. Um, they can be shifted around if you have a wavy um, cut. So you generally want to go off a factory cut if you can, um, or if not, like the straightest side. You know, you can also run a straight edge along it. Um, uh, and kind of press it up against the straight edge and then measure off of that. Um, but for the now, I just went ahead and used, um, I just used a, a ruler and my, my um, calipers um, and just kind of leveled everything up and, and got it all straight in there. Um, so I basically just taken a, a 4.2 millimeter drill bit here and just drilling out all the holes. Um, the idea being that I can, um, these can all be tapped out later once I get these things drilled out. So I'm going to go through and drill a whole bunch more of these. It's about here that I realize that something's not right. So I'm going to have to try a different approach. So as you can see, I've decided that uh, these holes were not aligned right. The holes that I was drilling, um, the, the drill bit both walked and also started kind of drilling off center and I had some um, oblong holes. Um, and I decided, listen, I've got this machine, I might as well use it. So what I'm doing here is I've got this plate turned around um, and I'm going to go ahead and get it all bolted up on the CNC and we're just going to use it as a glorified very accurate drill press and that's probably one of the best um, one of the cool things you can do with a, a CNC like this um, is to throw a fixture you know a simple fixture set up on it um, and throw a drill bit in there and you can drill super accurate patterns because you can just type in the um, the whole locations once you measure off of a corner um, so what I'm going to be doing here is just kind of snugging these guys up and I've got to go through and, and do a quick um, measure on the front of that um, so you can see me trying to figure out where am I going to attach this since I normally put it where my coolness now is located. Um, so the the plan here is to, to use this uh, test indicator just to get the front edge of this um, this machined edge. This is the, the cut edge from the factory. So I'm going to get that dialed in here within a couple thou. Um, and that will allow me to uh, make sure that as I, when I probe this and as I cut it, that it's going to actually align correctly with the x-axis um, and the y-axis so that my, uh, my square pattern that I, I, I cut, or I sorry, I drill, is actually in line with the um, the edges of this. So mostly for aesthetic reasons, since this is a pretty um, generous extra amount of material on here, um, I think I've got 25 millimeters on either side of the um, the the plate. So these are just as this is honestly just for perfection's sake because I <laughs> I like to be precise. So now that the um, the alignment's been done, I've uh, got these guys locked down. I'm just going to go ahead and probe the um, location, and that's so that I can use the CNC's um, built-in DRO to um, both indicate where I am on the sheet, as well as to uh, tell it to go to. So instead of having to um, sit here and, and manually dial in a location, I can just say, you know, enter in a G0 in the MDI screen, just say, you know, G0 um, X25, Y25, and go to the first location. Um, here I'm just, <clears throat> since I can't move the um, the part all the way back because of the limitations of my y-axis and how this is clamped to the bed, um, I've got to just do some kind of janky measurements. Once again, this isn't intended to be super accurate, mainly because um, the, there's a lot of slop on this plate as far as extra space. So I'm just kind of getting the, the tip of the caliper is aligned with the tip of this um, the center and that will kind of give me a uh, centered location where where it sits. And here I'm just eyeballing it a little bit to see that it's in the right location.
I'm basically going to go through and um, and drop this down to the surface here. And what I'm going to do is set the offset of this this bit. And it's kind of a little trick that that I use with these drill bits um, is to move it within like a millimeter or so, drop the drill bit down, and then retighten the chuck. Um, it pushes the drill bit into the surface a tiny bit, but when I do that, um, I actually hit the set offset button, so that also identifies where the zero is. And with drill bits, it usually just has to be within a couple, a couple thou, so it's not a big deal. Um, in this case, I started. I was about to start drilling and decided that uh, I should probably pilot these first, looking at how much the drill bit was wobbling around. These aren't exactly, you know, super accurate, the, these plain old jobber bits, so I'm just swapping in a 120-degree um, uh, quarter-inch um, stub um, spot drill. So this is really stiff, and it will allow me to do just a light um, center area here that will help out. Probably drill these a little too deep, but no big deal. Um, there's still plenty of material for the threads to grip onto in this um, this one. I think this is like eighth inch or uh, three millimeter thick aluminum. And while I'm doing this, I decide why not? You know, let's let's go ahead and spot drill everything since I have the spot drill in here. Um, and that'll make things a little easier later on when I have to actually go through and uh, drill these these out. I don't have to swap tools again. So for each one of these, what I'm doing is um, walking over to my fusion um, setup, and I'm using the measure function uh, to measure off of one uh, one side of this. Since I've probed the um, this front edge and the side edge, all my measurements are based on those two locations. Um, and then those um, distances can be entered directly into um, uh, the DRO or the, the G0 commands on the uh, in path pilot so that um, this can be easily just driven to exactly the right spot. Um, so I'm just doing some simple verifications. You know, this looks right, you know, visually, and then just doing a, a gentle little um, little spot to get the drill started so it doesn't walk all over the place and uh, wall out the hole. That's mainly the thing that happens. Um, if you have a, a drill bit that's kind of wobbly in a CNC, it, it's, it's held rigidly um, in the X and Y. But if the tip wobbles, it can start to um, can start to wallow out the hole a little bit, which isn't exactly what you're looking for. Hoping with my new camera, I can get some better camera angles too. This uh, this is a little frustrating here because my camera has to sit off to the side. I don't have very much zoom on it, so unfortunately. There are several spots in which this does not work out very well for me. And as you can see, it's of course out of focus and it refuses to focus on the center subject. Thank you, camera. So these holes are being drilled at 1000 RPM and I'm just using the, um, I have a Shuttle Express control. Um, which is a lot like an MPG, but it just allows you to um, mainly just have a, a variable um, linear motion. So you don't really, there's a step generator on it, but it's kind of frustrating to use. It's no, no, nothing like an MPG wheel on a normal CNC. So um, these would kind of require a little bit of um, little finesse to get the, the speeds just right as you drill it. Um, and one of the reasons I probed this was so that I could validate that I was going down far enough. Since when you're drilling aluminum into aluminum, the metals are very <laughs> similar in color, and then the, you can't really tell by looking on the hole that you're there. Um, so these are me just going back through the, the pauses, or when I just go back through the list of uh, MDI commands and find the next one that's in the appropriate hole, and then slowly uh, drive the drill down. All right, so we've got the four tapped holes drilled, and now we're going to move on to the six millimeter holes. Um, these are six millimeter because the TV uses M6 screws, so we're just going to drill um, M6 holes. And if you work with metric hardware, you know that metric hardware is about um, 0.2 millimeters undersize. Um, it can be anywhere from 0.2 to like 0.1 millimeters undersize. Um, so these metric drills are usually about 0.1 millimeters oversize. So between those two um, 
that those tolerances you'll, you'll you get a decent amount of clearance um, which is easily used to um, to make sure that you can get the the bolts to slide through without catching and in this case we're threading into the back of the TV so these will need to be um, uh, holes in which the bolts can slide through and I have a couple flanged bolts for use on this. Um, funnily enough these were bolts I bought for use on my car but it turns out that they're the only M6 bolts that I had that were um, the proper size to or the proper depth here to fit the the TV's kind of shallow um, riv nuts that they have inside. Just going to do a quick uh, deeper on the back sleeves with this excellent Noga tool. Um, works works great, and I would highly recommend that if you're doing any kind of drilling, they're fairly inexpensive and they they work just a treat for getting rid of these these uh, nasty burrs that normal twist drills cause even some light chamfering. He'll let us I excellent chamfer the uh, mistake holes too, but no big deal. Got ourselves a plate. So now we have to go through and tap these holes. Um, the four holes at the bottom have to be tapped so that they can be threaded into by the uh, with M5 bolts with the, um, the back plate that's on the uh, monitor arm itself. So this is the 100 by 100 VESA pattern which will bolt into this and then the bolts for the TV will slide through this and get bolts into the back of the TV to hold the two together. Um, unfortunately I found out that my tap, my small tap wrench is too small for this M5 tap. So we've got to go with the slightly larger stare at tap. And now I'm basically going to try to remove my monitor off of this the stand here. Played around with this for a minute and decided that the best way was probably to, to uh, lift the monitor. This part of the arm lifts off of the main arm. And I decided it would probably be easiest to do that as instead of um, try to half this monitor on a single tiny M4 screw um, but in the end it turned out to be a little bit more work than it should have been <laughs> to get this monitor off the arm before anyone gets upset about me setting the monitor face down this is an ancient monitor and it's I don't think anybody wants something like this anymore it's probably destined for the trash eventually. Alright, so with that out of there, it's time to start setting up the new stuff. I found some uh, M5 screws that are just long enough, look like they're 6 millimeters. I was initially concerned because it looked like they had a shoulder that was not gonna play well with the threads, but that shoulder appeared to be uh, tapered enough that it, would, it cleared the threads um, inside the hole and it did not protrude far enough to run into the TV so this was just about perfect just testing to make sure the shoulder wasn't bottoming out and preventing this from um, locking down fully against the the mount but all looks good so throw the rest of the screws in looks solid so you can see how this will sit in the vertical position. This is going to be bolted to the TV like that. I'm just kind of throwing it on the arm to make sure that it sits right. Moves around. And obviously it's meant to have a monitor on it so it springs right back up. So now we just got to 
fight the arm again, because I didn't learn my lesson the first time, and get this bolted down to the TV. Um, so the M6 um, bolts that I'm going to be using are they're shiny and they're from Ace and they're very expensive. Probably way more than you should ever pay for M6 hardware. I think they're 10.9, so um, completely unnecessary. But that's what I have and so that's what I'm going to use. Now looking at the back of this TV, I didn't really see any vents that I was going to be covering up. The heat flow seems to be up from the bottom where the speakers live um, and then up along the uh, this open protrusion on the back um, and there's a internal metal shield that seems to hold it up and then those vents at the top are where the, the heat comes out and later on I actually found that the, the plate seems to help out with heat dissipation it actually pulls some heat off of the um, the plastic there and tends to dissipate it into the air so it's it's actually gotten a bit of a heat sink um, through this Bolting it up, adjusting the tension on the arm, and the TV is basically in place. So does any of this work? Well, the mount that I created works great. The, uh, the TV is held up sturdy, uh, it doesn't tip around, I've been able to tension the arm up enough that it will support it. This TV only weighs about, I want to say it was like 16 or 17 pounds. Uh, I think this arm people said online was good for about 30 pounds. So I haven't had any issues there, I just ran the tension up on the arm and I increased the tension on the spring for the tilt um, and that helped keep everything a little sturdier. I still have to figure out what's going on. I'm having some troubles with my computer connecting to this. Uh, it, I think it has to do with the version of Linux that I'm running on here combined with the, how new this laptop is, this Gen 2 dock that I'm using uh, and the HDMI connection to the screen. All of them are just not kind of syncing up so I'm not able to get 60 hertz at 4K. I can only get it to run at 30 hertz. So, um, I need to play around with my laptop and everything to get it working, but I have gotten it to work at 60 hertz. It's just going through the dock is a bit of an ordeal for some reason. So I'm going to play around with that, uh, but as far as that goes, this project is finished. So uh, I can move on to now welding while my screen is on. Excellent. I'll see you all in the next one.